Good morning, boys and girls. It is good to see you again this morning. I hope you have had a really great week, and I hope that you are looking forward to school being over. It's almost done. It's almost done, and the weather is getting warmer, and it's time for those hot dogs and hamburgers and chicken on the grill, sweet corn, watermelon, and splashing in the pool. I love this time of year, and I love the nighttime with the lightning bugs and the late nights with the when it's still light outside and I just pray that you are having a great you're going to have a great summer I pray that you are looking forward to school next year being a little different than it was this year things kind of getting back to normal that's what we're praying for right now well last week we were studying 2 Kings 6 24 through 7 20 Israel was going through a terrible famine and because the Syrian army under King Ben-Hadid II, um, they were stuck inside their, their gates, inside the walls. The army had surrounded those walls, and it was so bad that women were cannibalizing their children. The people were eating the horses and the donkeys. They were starving to death. There was not going to be much life left. God made the enemy army fearful of some noises that they thought were other armies coming in behind them. And they thought that Israel had somehow gotten out and got these other armies and got them to come in and help them. They took off. The men just took off. They left everything behind. The people of Israel were able to go out, pick up gold and silver and flour and barley. Horses and donkeys were left. All their personal items, everything was left. They were able to go out and get it. So it ended what was happening there. We are now going into 2 Kings 8, and it begins with a Shuman woman returning to Israel. She had been sent away. She had been away for uh, seven years. Elijah had brought her son back to life, and he had told her there's going to be a famine. Go find someplace else to live for seven years because there's not going to be anything here for you. So remember, Elisha is a prophet of God, and God speaks to him and gives messages for the people. So he had told her, God says, you've got to get um, out. So after Elijah had brought her son back to life and he told her to leave, she did. And she is now, at, after this drought, she's now coming back to Israel. And it is, like I said, it had been seven years since she had been gone. And she returned to Israel and went to the king and asked for her house and her land back. And he not only gave her the house and the land back, but he told his people that she needs to have the profit that was made on her using her land while she was gone. So she got her house, her land, and she got money. Now, I want to go into a little bit of history here of these verses. It gives us a picture of how God is dealing with Israel. Now, during very long years, Israel is deprived of everything. They many times went through very many famines, different things that happened, but God preserves all of them. You know, you remember when their their exit from Egypt and then the different things that they've gone through all these times, and it was 40 years in the desert then. And in the day of blessings, all will be restored to them. And they will receive the fruit of their years of affliction. The son of this woman was restored to life. Her coming back to the land of Israel, she was restored to the house, the prophets, and um, the, the land and the prophets from what, when she was gone. God's judgments are accomplished, but restoration comes. So all the things that he allowed Israel to go through, all the years of famine, the different times, the wars, the, the bad things that were happening, he would let them go through it, bring them down to a very low point in their life, and then he would restore them and bring them back. And that's what God also does in our life. Sometimes he allows us to go through very painful things. He allows us to go through things that hurt our hearts, hurt our souls, but he can restore everything and bring us back. So after this part of, the, of, of Second Kings, we are now looking at Elisha again. Now remember, Elisha is a prophet of God. We talked about what that is. 
but I want to step back to 1 Kings 19, 15 through 16, and remember the prophet of God, Elijah, not Elisha, Elijah with a J-A-H. He was commissioned by God to anoint Hazel king of Syria, Jehu king over Judah, and Elisha as a prophet. Now, commission means to be granted or given powers to do something, to perform an act of duty. So Elijah was told by God to anoint these three people. And the only one he got around to doing was Elisha. Elisha anointed Elisha before. <laughs> but it gets confusing, Elisha and Elijah. Now, Elisha, Elisha was taken up to heaven in a fiery chariot. He never died. God took him straight up to heaven. And behind, he had left Elisha as the next prophet of God who people were working through. So he did not um, anoint Hazel or Jehu, but he did anoint Elisha. So here we are. A prophecy is a prediction of something to come, something told by a prophet. So God speaking to the prophet, he prophesies, he tells a prophecy to the people. Now, Ben Hadad, the king of Assyria, he had they had been warring with Israel for a long time. His army is the one that God had caused to run from Israel. They had run back to their own homes. And that was in last week's lesson. Now we're working looking at King Ben Hadad again, and he becomes sick. Apparently he was very sick. And he heard Elisha was visiting the town that he was in, Damascus. And he asked Hazel, his assistant, to go to Elijah and ask him if he would be recovering from the illness he was in. Now, Hazel was a mean soldier. And I, when I say mean, you're going to hear more about him at the end of today's lesson. He was not a nice person. You're going to see him do something very evil. And he was an enemy of Israel. And he would later come to kill very many of God's people. Now, like Elisha and Hazel went to Elisha, and Elisha told him the king would recover, but that he would also die. It's kind of contradictory there, too. It's kind of inconsistent. So he was true in what he was saying. The king would recover from his illness. But he will, he will die. And Hazel was going to be the one who murdered him. Now, Elisha also told Hazel that he would be the next king of Syria. And he also told him that he would wage war against Israel. And it would be severe and it would be brutal. Elisha must have anointed Hazel at this point because he became king in just a little while. And you can hear, wow. He went back to the king and he told him, Elijah says you're going to recover. And that's all he told him. He didn't tell him the rest of it. The next day, Hazel took a thick cloth. He soaked it in water. He placed it over the king's face. And he held it there until the king died. Hazel became the next king of Syria. Remember what Elijah said it would happen. War with Israel. And that's going to be coming in the next few weeks. We're going to stop there today with um, the verses that we're talking about. Uh, we don't like evil people. We don't like it when they rule our country. We don't want to be controlled or hurt by others, even though uh, there's a lot of them that end up in leadership. There's a lot that end up in positions, but they are in those positions God allows that to happen. Sometimes there's a lesson that we need to learn as a nation. Sometimes it is to make us desire to turn back to him like we are supposed to. We need to be a God-fearing country again, a country that knows God, loves God, hears God, and talks to God through his wonderful son, Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, it is important to read God's word to know how much he loves you and wants you and me to love him 
boys and girls to know his word, to understand his word, to realize the lessons that are being taught in his word. God never changes. He is the same the way he was when this was happening today, and he will be the same tomorrow. Those lessons need to be learned so we know what God wants for us. Boys and girls, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to read your word. Lord, we thank you for the people who you place before us who can help us to understand that word. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that he came to fulfill that word. Lord, that we ask that you be with each and every person who is out there today in, in, in churches, outside of churches, listening to your word, hearing your word. May, Lord, they all remember to turn back to you. And, Lord, may we be the light to be in the life of those who don't know you. In Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I miss you and I love you. I hope you have a really great week.